Light showers along the lower Texas Gulf Coast today, followed by the chance for thunderstorms returning for parts of the state on Sunday. Just how cold is it going to get next week? Well, let's talk about it in this Thursday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. Good morning. It is Thursday, the 2nd of January, 2025. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer. We are looking at a bit of a busy weather pattern going into next week across the state with multiple weather events on the calendar, but none that explicitly forecast significant issues for most folks. But we are going to have to deal with some issues in some parts of Texas before the bottom falls out of the thermostat next week comparatively at least. Let's manage our expectations here. Here's today's high-res rapid refresh model. We're expecting the opportunity for some light showers along the Texas Gulf Coast today down into the Rio Grande Valley as we deal with the potential for a quick hitting storm system. The good news is, well, we're not expecting a significant issue in terms of storms or heavy rain, but it's not going to be the prettiest of days, especially down along the coast, Rio Grande Valley, and in the inland regions of the coastal plain southeast Texas. This is not a severe weather threat. As we go into Friday morning, the opportunity for dense fog, Edwards Plateau, Rio Grande Plain, South Texas, even up by 35 through the hill country, central Texas, north Texas, maybe a bit into southeast Texas, the coastal plains. That could have some impact on morning aviation operations. That'll burn off by about 10 to 11 a.m. central time leading to a decent day across the northern two-thirds of the state. Still some showers across the southern portions of Texas, but again, we're not expecting too, too many issues with that. Increasing clouds tomorrow night. Wildfire outlook from the Texas A&M Forest Service. Here we go today, tomorrow, and Saturday. We're generally looking at low to moderate fire danger across the state. High fire danger possibly in the Big Bend, West Texas, into the borderland, the Trans-Pecos, Davis, Guadalupe, Mounds. Overall, not expecting a significant amount of wildfire activity over the next several days, and things should actually calm down further as we get into next week at the arrival of a much cooler air mass. Now, let's take a look at the long-range American weather model, the global forecast system. As we go into the weekend, we'll begin transitioning from southerly winds on Saturday to the arrival of a cold front and storm system Sunday. You can see western half of the state going to have northwest strong winds as we get into Sunday morning. A line of fast-moving thunderstorms possible. East Texas, southeast Texas, the Golden Triangle, late Thursday morning into sun Thursday morning. How about late Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon? Those storms will quickly exit east into Louisiana and the Gulf of Mexico by well, late Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening. We'll firm up the timing as we get a bit closer, and we'll talk more about those storms in just a minute. After that, we're expecting a strong cold front to move south through Texas Sunday night, Monday into Tuesday, bringing below average temperatures to much of Texas for the upcoming week. Severe weather outlook for Sunday. The Storm Prediction Center continues to highlight the potential for isolated to scattered severe thunderstorms across East Texas, Southeast Texas, and the Golden Triangle. Now, at this point, this does not have the same look as the systems we dealt with, well, pre-Christmas, post-Christmas, and, well, several days after Christmas, you know, the last week of December. This is looking like more of a fast-moving line of thunderstorms with Texas at the starting gates once again with probably a continued severe weather threat into Sunday evening across portions of Louisiana and Mississippi. As it stands now, localized damaging wind gusts over 60 miles an hour appear to be the primary threat with this, but we can't rule out a few storms ahead of the squall line, which may have some threat for a brief tornado or two, along with maybe a brief spin-up tornado in the line of storms itself. Again, this does not at this point look like something we dealt with, say, last week, but it is a threat we'll continue to monitor as the potential for some strong winds, maybe a spin-up tornado could exist with the fast-moving line of storms late Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon. Otherwise, 
with the fast movement of the storms and all of the expectations with that, we're not looking at a lot of rain, so the flooding threat is not going to be particularly noticeable. In fact, here's the forecast five-day rain totals from the Weather Prediction Center. You can see, I mean, really the only parts of Texas expected to see over a tenth of an inch of rain through next Tuesday morning. Uh, really the eastern, what, 15% uh, of the state? I wouldn't say it's the eastern 10th, eh, 15, whatever. We're kind of bickering over nothing here. But uh, northeast Texas, east Texas, the Golden Triangle, uh, the Piney Woods of East Texas, a uh, tenth to a quarter inch of rain possible, maybe a half inch of rain if you get lucky. And again, that's because storms are going to be moving so stinking quick on Sunday. And then we're looking dry on Monday and Tuesday. Now, after that, we'll have to see. There is about, let's go with a third to maybe 40% chance that we may have to deal with a storm system on Wednesday and Thursday of next week. After the cold air has arrived, at this point, if that happens, it looks like it would be a southern half of Texas event in terms of the best precipitation chances. And yes, with cold air in place, if it were to happen, there may be some risk for winter precipitation. At this point, the that is the lower probability scenario. The higher probability scenario is we stay dry and we don't really deal with any precipitation, but it's still going to be cold. The cold's going to happen. The precipitation is far more uncertain, so stay tuned as we get into next week. Your phone apps, a lot of them are probably going to show varying solutions ranging from dry to the next winter storm apocalypse because they're driven by automatic weather model data, which they're waffling more than, you know, me at Waffle House deciding if I want to order the All-Star or just go with one of those... Uh, chicken melt bowls. All right, let's take a look. Here's today's high temperature forecast across the state. It's going to be a cool day up in the panhandle. Highs mostly in the 50s, upper 50s in portions of Texas, but in northeast Texas. Otherwise, the rest of the state, we're looking at highs of 60s and 70s. Not bad for the second day of 2025. Tomorrow, a bit cooler down into the big country, northwest Texas. Highs into the 50s. Otherwise, 60s, 70s across the state. So we get into Saturday. We're expecting the coolest conditions to be eastern northeastern panhandle perryton to canadian and then across northeast texas uh, 50s northeast of a line from gainesville to tyler to lufkin and then otherwise the rest of the state we're looking at highs mostly up into the upper 60s 70s and even some 80s it's going to be a nice day you can see we have compressional heating ahead of well technically ahead of a cool front and our upper level storm system on sunday you can see highs only in the 40s in the panhandle sunday while those of you down in the Rio Grande Valley, South Texas, Edwards Plateau, even South Central Texas, San Antonio, Victoria, down. Uh, you're going to be in the 80s Sunday. 70s, southern half of the state, 60s from the Permian Basin, the big country, Central Texas, North Texas, into the Arklatex. And then behind that, cold front comes in. Highs on Monday, we're going to be lucky to get into the 40s. It looks like the Panhandle, Texoma, North Texas, Northeast Texas. Uh, you can see if you look to the north, we're barely going to be above freezing along the north of Interstate 40 in Oklahoma. Still, those of you in South Texas, southern third of the state on Monday, enjoy another day of warmer weather. Highs mostly in the 60s, maybe low 70s before crashy the cold front arrives and knocks you down into the 50s. And then as we go on from there, it's going to be pretty chilly next week. Now, let's manage our expectations here by saying at this point, we're not looking at a crazy cold Arctic air mass invading Texas. East of Texas, yeah. Southeastern United States, the Tennessee Valley, up through the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the eastern third of the United States, they're going to be stinking cold. Us, we're just getting a glance and blow here in Texas. It's going to knock us down, and it's going to be cold. Highs, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday across most of the state, probably in the 40s, maybe 30s, northern half of the state. And we're going to have multiple nights of freezes next week across at least the northern 75% of Texas with temperatures down to the teens, 20s, low 30s. And then, you know, the southern you know, third of the state, southern quarter of the state, you know, the Rio Grande Valley, deep south Texas, probably lows in the 30s, maybe low 40s. So again, it doesn't look like at this point the Rio Grande Valley is going to drop below freezing, but that could change. If it is, it'll probably flirt with freezing versus, you know, a very hard freeze. But northern 75 to 80 percent of Texas, yeah, we're going to have multiple nights 
below freezing next week. And the northern half of the state, we're probably going to be flirting with teens some night. So, yeah, it's going to be cold. It's definitely going to be the coldest we've been so far this winter. But it's not one of these, you know, we're going to drop below zero or we're going to see sub-zero temps across the northern half of the state. It's going to be cold. But it's not going to be record cold or, you know, one of these crazy things that needs to freak everyone out. Let's manage expectations here. It's winter. It's going to get cold at some point, even if the winter as a whole has above average temperatures. So we'll keep an eye on it. And yeah, we'll keep an eye on the system next Wednesday and Thursday. If that verifies Yeah, maybe we'll have some winter weather mischief across parts of the state. But at this point, that's a lower probability scenario. But hey, you know what? The snow folks can hope, right? That's going to be it for your Thursday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. As always, you can get your local weather forecast, interactive weather radar, and more in the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. And you can find us on YouTube. Just search for Texas Weather Center. Y'all have a great Thursday. We'll be back bright and early tomorrow with your next edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. Have a great day. God bless. Mm-hmm.